dad has always pressured me to win all of my biking races, whether it means cheating or not. So when I finally got to the national championships, he was not different. Actually, quite the opposite of different. Come on, Tara, you're way better than them, he whispered in my ear as I checked my tires for air. Go beat them. I don't care what it takes. You just have to be first. I know, Dad. Aren't I always the best? Always. Go pound them down, Tara. I'll be in the first row, he said as he started to walk away. Then I clipped my water bottle to the side of my bike and adjusted my $800 bike helmet. I was ready. About 20 minutes later, I heard my name over the loudspeakers. And here comes Tara Ellis, all the way from Carlingford, New Hampshire. I wiped my bike over to the starting line, twirling my finger on a lock of hair. I was nervous. My mind was on other things. Then I saw the number five appear on the humongous screen. Four, three. I put one foot on a pedal. Two, the other foot. One. I sped forward, easily passing about six other bikers. That left Evan Kurtz, who I did not have to worry about because his dad was a champion biker, but he hates it and Andrea Kingston, who had beaten me last year at Regionals. She wasn't going to beat me this year. I sped forward, putting myself next to Evan for a little, but then stuck my foot in his chain. He fell down immediately. That left Andrea. I used up the last of my strength to catch up to her. I tried to ram into her, but ended up snapping back with the chain right under my bell count, bike helmet. The last thing I saw was Andrea bending over me, saying, Tara, are you okay? I woke up in the middle of this white, shining fog that almost blinded me. I noticed I was still wearing my biking gear and holding onto my bike as the radiant fog lifted to reveal a biking path that stretched as far as I could see. I just stood there for a while, soaking it all in. Did I die? Was this a dream? I put my thoughts aside and started along the lightly acorn-strewn path. Maybe I could try to find something out along the way. My wheels crushed one of the acorns and a memory came back to me. I used to live right next to a library, and every day my mother would take me to a story time. Well, one day the librarian who was reading the story asked me what my name was, and instead of telling her, I just stuck my tongue out at her. We didn't go to that library a long time after that. I was suddenly back on the trail again just like the flashback had never happened. I rode along, but now maneuvering the acorns to avoid more painful memories, doing so successfully, but not for long. When I was 13, I had a friend who invited me to go to her birthday. I said I could, but I didn't. And the next day in school, she ignored me completely. I lost that friendship. My bike shifted gears, and I snapped out of it, but not soon enough. When I was 15, my mom punished me for going out to a movie with my friends and not telling her. I was so angry that I kicked a hole in my door. It's still there. I opened my eyes, and the white fog had again surrounded me, but I wasn't in my biking gear anymore and I was in some sort of bed. Then everything went back, black. She's awake. She's awake. My daughter's awake. Tara's awake. My dad was standing next to my hospital bed when I woke up. I'm out of the hospital bed now, fine. But if you will excuse me, I have to go deliver some apologies.